Hey friends, <clears throat> cool. Paul here uh, at Circular Motion bringing you another video. Welcome back, I hope everybody is well and I hope you're all living, loving, loving life and, and living a dream and listening to loads of records. Uh, and of course, I'm here again to talk about more records. I've got five for you to go through. Um, as always, well at the moment, as always, I'm going through uh, my dad's record collection records that he kindly gave to me and uh, we've got another cool selection to get through today. Uh, before we do though, uh, first things first, if you're coming back, thank you and welcome back. If you're new, welcome. Thank you for joining us. Uh, it would be awesome if you could hit the subscribe button. That would mean a lot to me. I'm at 93 subscribers now. I'm trying to get to 100 before my birthday, which is coming up soon and don't forget to tickle the old notification bell to keep abreast of any new content of which there will be some i've got some singles to go through at some point as well um, and i also have something new to share with you as well and it is actually well it's not it's, it's a reissue but it's it's a bit of new new album that i've just bought so <clears throat> without much further ado oh oh one more thing going to see the stones in less than a month so they're playing the Hyde Park British Summertime Festival uh when we found out my dad was kind of like oh this could be the last time I get to see him I'd really like to go so we looked at it and to be honest to get the tickets weren't too expensive but just the cost of getting there and the cost of like a hotel it would be cheaper to leave the gas on overnight than it would be to like try and do that so uh we were disappointed but I had a look and turns out they're doing a European tour and it kind of starts in a month's time, just less than a month. And so they're playing Anfield. So Liverpool. So we're going down there. <clears throat> it's a lot cheaper and a lot sooner too. It's like a month earlier. So I'm excited. They're a band I haven't seen and after listening to a lot of the records that my dad's given me, uh, they're a band I really want to see um, before. This could be the last time they tour. So before they call it a day. Um, sadly, obviously, it's not the original lineup because uh, Charlie Watts just died, and obviously Brian Jones died years ago. But you know, it's like the, what's left of the Prime Stones lineup. Um, so that's really exciting, and it comes two days after we go and see Jeff Beck as well. So it's going to be quite a week. Um, so yeah, it's going to be good. My dad saw them in '62. This isn't his first rodeo with the Stones. He saw them in '62, which is just mind blowing, and then '82. And now he's going to see them in 2022. So he missed 2002. So 40 years since he last saw them. Which again is mind blowing. So <clears throat> without much further ado. Let's look at some records. So first off. I'm going to blow your mind with Mr George Harrison. Uh, extra texture. And it is an original 75 copy. It's got that weird little emboss thing there. And you can see it's like a textured cover. Except the writing's not, so the writing's kind of like nice and smooth. So yeah, it's, it is. It is really sort of nicely packaged. Uh, oh, not him again. Uh, another picture there. So this album is his sixth studio album, and it was his first album for EMI and his last album for Apple. And it was also the last studio album that Apple released, apparently. Apple Records, of course, not the manufacturers of the iPhone. Um, <clears throat> it's quite a soulful record, allegedly. Uh, it doesn't really do a lot for me, I'll be honest. Um, it, I don't know, when I first put it on, the first song, I just thought it was uh, at the wrong speed. I thought I'd put it on a 45, not a 33, because the vocals were so like high-pitched. I just, I don't know, it didn't do anything for me, and I'm not going to lie, I know he was one of the Beatles, um, but it just left me cold. Um, one or two tracks were alright. Um, this guitar, Can't Keep From Crying, which is actually a, a sequel to Wild Mikey Char Gent Gently Weeps, uh, that was quite a really, really nice track. Uh, and Grey Cloudy Lies, I quite liked, but the rest of it, I don't know. So it wasn't, uh, it did go gold, but it was poorly received apparently. Um, so um, it went gold in the US, that's important to note. And produced by George Harrison. 
Um, and that's all there is to say about that, really. Moving on. <clears throat> Excuse me. Got a bit of a bit of a cough. What we've got sea level. Um, and this is on the edge. So this is what's left of the Allman Brothers band, apparently. Uh, I can't even read David. So Davis Causey, there we go. Chuck Libble, uh, Joe English, and that's my dog just having a dream. And Randall Bramblet, I think. There you go, she's woke up again. And Lamar Williams. So that's the dude right there. Um, as you can see, I think it's been a, a cut out. But uh, it's a nice album, actually. It is. It is. It, um, I was, wasn't quite sort of to know the, the, the cover. To know, usually, you know, you can kind of look at the cover and if it's not got a picture of the band on it, it's kind of funny artwork like that. You, you kind of build a picture in your head of what it's going to be like. And I don't know what I expected. It, I expected something a little bit more sort of 80s synth based but this is a 1978 copy this is the original 1978 release uh, version um, they did five studio albums and two great hits albums um, and this was their third album and yeah it's all right it's passable not too bad kind of like a jazz funk southern rock fusion interestingly enough um, there's nothing that really stands out but it's got a really nice sound to it it's a really nice press in there's some like, nice separation on there so if you get a chance to listen to that I can recommend that next up we have slow hand himself so Eric Clapton no reason to cry again this is like another it's only slightly embossed I don't think you can see it but the guitar pick slightly embossed uh, I think we're supposed to think that having a broken guitar pick is no reason to cry. This is it's a nice album, actually. It is. Um, it's, but it's weird because if you listen to some, in my opinion, you listen to like sort of Stone stuff around the same time that this was released, which was seventy six. Um, even like the later stuff, stuff they've done this decade, this century. Um, They've got that edge, that rock and roll edge, you know, you think that they are quite capable of being dirty boys. This just sounds, I don't know, polished, too polished. It doesn't sound dirty enough. Um, but, you know, there's no denying the man's talent. Uh, the band, as in the band, uh, playing on this, and there is a song, Sign Language, that Bob Dylan sings on and I think he kind of co-wrote it uh, but yeah County Jail Carnival Beautiful Shine is it or Beautiful I can't even read that Beautiful Thing um, All Our Past Times Innocent Times Hello Old Friend Double Trouble Hungry and Black Summer Rain it's a nice album it's got some really nice tunes on it it was his most successful international release um, 1976 but not a critical success overall wasn't as as well received as some of his other stuff which is odd you know you kind of expect with the reputation he's got for him to have had you know quite a quite a glittering career and, and to have been well received at every opportunity but it's, it seems that's not the case um, and it's only now sadly that i'm kind of getting into it and, and learning all this you know you, you'd think that eric clapton to me eric clapton was always like somebody that was supposed to be a cut above the rest and so I expected that his record sales would be quite phenomenal but it's a really nice sounding record um, it's a really nice pressing uh, if you get a chance to listen to it I can recommend it again <laughs> next up though we've got this beauty chart wall so this is you'll have seen over the years, adverts, if you're in England, probably in America too, you'll have seen adverts for Ronco, Ronco and k -Tel. So this is one of those those um, compilation albums that they would release that people would buy and play at parties. Um, and it's, you know, it, it's not bad. 
and I've said it before and I'll say it again, how do they do these? How did they do these? Now they can just have everything, you know, on a hard drive and that's easy enough to do. But this, when it was all analogue, probably, um, they would have had to get all the tapes together. But it's got some great tracks on it. It really does. Rio, Duran, Duran, Stool Pigeon, Kid Creole and the Coconuts. Um, so Kid Creole not to be mistaken with Kid Creole with two Ds that's just been sent down for stabbing somebody, stabbing some homeless dude in America. He was with Grandmaster Flash, I want to say. Uh, Ziggy Stardust by Bauhaus, which is a really nice version. Uh, the End or the Beginning by Classics Nouveau, which is one I recognise the name of the band. I don't recognise the track. She Blinded Me With Science by Tom Stolby, which is great. And if I'm correct in thinking, that was on the soundtrack to Weird Science with Kelly LeBrock. Uh, Never Give You Up, Sharon Red, Signed, Sealed, Delivered, I'm Yours, Boys Town Gang, 101, 101 Damnations by Scarlet Party, uh, Young Guns Go For It by Wham with the inimitable George Michael, Zambezi by the Piranhas featuring Bob Grover and that Bob Grover at the top there with the trumpet, I have no idea who Bob Grover is or was. Peace Out, we've got I Don't Want to Dance by Eddie Grant. Life in Tokyo, a special remix by Japan. Um, Dracula's Tango by Toto Coelho. Why, Carly Simon. Uh, wish, Wishing, sorry, if I had a photograph of you by A Flock of Seagulls. Uh, Talk Talk by Talk Talk. I Wouldn't Decided by Typefit. Video Tech by Dollar. It Should Have Been You by Gwen Guthrie. And finally, Save Your Love by Rene and Renato. Outstanding. And that's like 20 tracks. So as you can imagine, the sound quality is not the best. It is a little flat, but it it's still quite a decent pressing. It's still it's still definitely worth a place in anyone's record collection. It is. It's just one of those records you can just stick on, and if you're of that era, you can just kind of drift back on a wave of nostalgia. So yeah, I don't know why my dad's got this record. I can only assume it was either. Uh, his wife's or I don't know somebody gave it to him for Christmas maybe if you're watching dad he watches on his TV which is why I know I always say if you're watching leave me a comment but he also watches on his TV so you can't leave a comment on that and he's not very technically minded either but never mind anyway great album next uh, oh we've got more than uh, more than a few to go through still We've got I Stand Alone by Al Cooper. Now, I didn't know who Al Cooper was and I saw these uh, these records. I mean, that's got that, that's some great photo editing there. If you think that this was before uh, Photoshop was even invented, so everything had to be done like in a dark room in a studio somewhere. So they managed to put his head on the Statue of Liberty. So that would have taken some doing. It wouldn't have been, you know, nowadays it's a five minute job. But back then, there would have been a little bit of messing around involved, cutting things out and stuff. So yeah, brilliant. Well done at the art department. There's a nice picture on the back there. So yeah, Al Cooper. This is a 69 release. This is a 69 release. Uh, the chart was just from 82, by the way. And it, I put it on not knowing what to expect. Thought I'd never heard of him, but it turns out I have, and I'll tell you why shortly. But um, yeah, and I put it on and Wow, straight from the get-go. It's brilliant. It's a lovely, bright-sounding album with some great keyboards. And apparently that is his forte, no pun intended, it, the the piano um, and and or keyboards. But he's uh, it's kind of, in terms of the music, it's kind of a mixture between, I don't know, there's like, it's a bit jazzy. It's a bit funky, it's a bit soulful, it's a bit rocky. It's got a bit of everything in there. It's a nice, bright, sort of, you know, it's a, a nice, bright canvas that he's painted with with lots of different talent. So, yeah, he's got Coloured Rain on there by Steve Winwood. Um, he's written a lot of the tracks on here, but he's also got one by Harry Nilsson, Billy Monroe, Hayes and Porter, uh, Gamble, Huff and Butler, my hey Western Union man. Um, and yeah, he, he is apparently quite a prolific producer. He produced, and this is how I didn't know that I knew him, but I do know him. He produced the Tube's debut album, which I have a, a fame copy of. Uh, 
and he, that's a really nice sounding album if you ever get a chance to listen to it I think I've I've had it out even I think I did it in my final tag maybe I don't know I can't remember in my first final tag the first video I ever did but I'm definitely sure that I've, I've talked about it um, so yeah but he did organ on Dylan's Rolling Stone he played the French horn French horns French horns on the stones um, you can't always get what you want which is another banging track. Um, he worked with Stephen Stills and he produced Skinner's first three albums. So yeah, he's been, you know, he's, he's quite a dude, but this album is great. The first song was just kind of interesting in as much as it, it evoked memories of Gershwin and that's the famous for na, 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 na. Rhapsody in Blue uh, that kind of it, it wasn't that it was nothing like that at all but the piano that that kind of filters in and out of the track really kind of put you in that that frame of mind so yeah this this album is an absolute banger if you get a chance to to check it out then I thoroughly recommend it to you Next up, and last but not least, I said that we only have five, but actually I've got seven, seven to go through. You lucky people. We've got Marvin Gaye live. Marvin Gaye live at the Oakland Coliseum. Um, and it, it was postponed once, apparently, the uh, the actual show, because he suffered from stage fright. He suffered from really bad anxiety. Um, you know, it's a bit like Adele. I think she suffers from the same kind of thing. And it must be awful. If that's your bread and butter, but you know, because you I don't know, we, we've all been anxious at some point in our lives, and to actually have to go out and like do something that's making you anxious to earn money must be, you know, it must be quite a dilemma. But this is a a great sounding album. This is it's not like a soundboard album. It's like uh, recorded in the Coliseum itself, so there's microphones all over. That's what it sounds like to me, and. It, it is it just captures it captures everything i think you know it is an album you put on and some albums you put on and you think this is you know you forget it's a live album um and i was listening to something just recently the leonard cohen album that i talked about last week i believe before that uh, that live album that didn't really you wouldn't know it was a live album really if it didn't say it was a live album because it it, it just sounds like it's him in a, in a studio a bit like the nick cave at the palladium one um, that same kind of vibe where he's playing just in a big empty room but that's what this sounds like but with loads of people there it does, it's got a real live feel to it a bit like Live Killers by Queen that isn't the, maybe the best sounding live album but it, it's a live album it sounds like a live album I really like it and Kiss Alive that's another one that obviously was overdubbed with uh, audience sounds they had them like on a loop going round and round and round just to sort of keep the the pressure up of the of the audience but it it works it works really well anyway um i'm just waffling like i do because i do that a lot we've got uh, the beginning so we've got introduction and overture trouble man so i've got the trouble man album over there and i bought that simply because uh sam the the falcon was telling uh cap all the time that he needed to listen to trouble man that was everything he needed to know was on that about music was on that album and it is a great album um so then we've got inner city blues make me want to holler distant lover jam then we've got fossil medley so i'll be dog on try it baby can i get a witness you're a wonderful one stubborn kind of fellow how sweet it is to be loved by you now let's get it on and what's going on and it is it is a great album it is uh and it's on the Tamla Motown label, and it's uh, this is an it was released in seventy four, but this is a reissue. This is a, an eighty one reissue. Um, again, it's not a record that I would have expected my dad to have, but he does, and I'm grateful for it because it is an absolute banger. So there you go, bit of Marvin. Listen to Marvin all night long. Last but not least, into the arena. So this is kind of like a bit of a, it says Chrysalis Sounds there. This was released in 81. It's a compilation album. I think it's just really showcasing uh, Chrysalis Records and some of the artists that were on the label at the time. And uh, it is 
it is wonderful it's another you know it's a bit like the the chart walls one it's just like a little slice like a snapshot of, of music at that point in time um and and a snapshot of chris Lissy's sort of catalog really at that time so what have we got michael schenker i've seen michael schenker live and now i don't think i've seen him with the scorpions i've seen rudy his brother with the scorpions and i've seen michael schenker with the ufo um and it was weird because he kind of it was one of the times after he would left the band again and come back again and he was kind of like stood on one side of the stage and the rest of the band sitting on the other side of the stage it was really weird a really weird vibe but yeah we've got into the arena which is a great track uh we've got rory gallagher hellcat which is brilliant and it's unmistakable like, the one thing i've kind of come to see about rory gallagher is he's got this unmistakable guitar sound and unmistakable voice um, when you kind of hear the track, any sort of track by him, you can immediately kind of think, ah, so this is Rory Gallagher. This is, before he starts singing, you're going to think, this is Rory Gallagher. Um, Pat Benatar, Hell is for Children, which isn't a really cheery thought. Generation X, obviously Billy Idol, uh, and uh, pre Billy Idol, Billy Idol, uh, when he was in uh, Generation X, Untouchables. Trevor Rabin, so the guitarist from Yes, South African dude. Uh, this is off his album, this is um, She's Easy, and it's off his album um, Wolf. And uh, before vinyl fell out of favour, and I sold most of my records back in the sort of 90s it was, and early 2000s, like an idiot, I, I sold loads of stuff. But I had, um, what was it, it was Take Me To A Party, and looking for a lady that was it it was a seven inch single it was a picture cover i don't know if you can kind of see that there it was that cover um and it was a clear vinyl single and i wish i hadn't got rid of it because it was those two tracks are excellent so if you've got a copy of wolf on vinyl and you want to get rid of it hit me up leave me a comment down below and then finally on this side we've got stiff little fingers tin soldiers uh on the b side We've got UFO, which is uncanny because I was just talking about them. Uh, Chains, Chains, Chains. Robin Troa, Victims of the Fury. Again, that's another great track. Um, Robin Troa is not someone that I'm really like over familiar with, but it's, it is a decent track. Uh, Lynx, I won't forget, which is more of like a funky track. Uh, then we've got the Q-Tips. Now, I'm not sure if this is because the Q-Tips, did they have... Did they do Toast? A track called Toast. Uh, this track is called Looking for Some Action and Paul Young used to sing for the Q-Tips, if I'm not mistaken. I've seen Paul Young live too at the Freddie Mercury Tribute concert. Then we've got The Selector with Bomb Scare. It's a great track. And finally, The Fabulous Thunderbirds, I Believe I'm In Love. And it is a banging album. On the cover we've got kind of an homage to Fritz Lang's Metropolis with a kind of pastiche of, of Maria, the, the famous robot, um, in one of those freaky kind of 80s artsy-fartsy front covers uh, on the back. It's just like a little bit of a bio for each song in the band. Um, but yeah, a great album and a great selection of stuff to, to, to have gone through there. Um, so if you're watching, thanks, Dad. I really appreciate it. So yeah, that's it for this week or this episode even i've got uh, a seven inch one coming out soon so i've got another 10 singles to go through and i've got a new record to share with you all so uh keep keep stay tuned keep in touch keep listening to records and uh yeah if uh, if you have any records any recommendations please leave me a comment down below don't forget to hit like don't forget to forget to hit subscribe if you're new uh, and stay safe and i'll see you soon There we go. Well, that was embarrassing. Start again. Oh, that stinks. <laughs>